So I have with us here Sam Williams from Arweave. Thank you for joining us, Sam. Hi. Yeah. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Glad to. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Give us a background on how you got into blockchain technology and what you thought of it. So I first got into uh, blockchain back in, I think, 2012 or so. Uh, I was sort of aware of Bitcoin around the time it surpassed $1. Um, yeah, but I really got into it properly back in the boom of 2012-13, when okay. all of the altcoins started appearing. And uh, yeah, I bought into the Ethereum presale with uh, Bitcoins that I'd mined myself. So that was my sort of entry into the system. And then I was doing a PhD in distributed systems over the last few years. And last year, yeah, we started the Arweave project. Wow. So long time holder is the category you'd fall into. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't hold as much as I probably should have done, but there we go. Well, that's the way everybody feels these days. <laughs> so Arweave is its own blockchain. A lot of the ICOs we talk about on this channel have just tokens on someone else's blockchain. They run on the Ethereum network or another network, but this is its own blockchain. Give us the elevator pitch, the 30 second clip on what Arweave is. Sure. So Arweave is a permanent information storage platform on a new kind of blockchain that we call a Blockweave. Essentially, what we've done is we've taken the blockchain, but we've allowed it to uh, scale to massive data storage sizes on the data structure itself. And we've uh, created a system that we call proof of access that rewards miners for the storage of that data and also the serving of that data on demand. So it's a platform that's available to developers to build all kinds of applications on top of. Uh, everything from decentralized Twitter to decentralized um, Facebook, everything you can really build on top of it. Uh, and it's available for developers to use with a really simple interface. So it, it works almost just like a hard drive. There's a get and a put. And so you can, you can use it in any kind of normal application. You just replace the database calls with calls to the Arweave, and then you make it decentralized. Wow. So you can connect to any node on the network to give or pull data, or does it need to be a mining node? Uh, it needs to be a mining node. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Wow. So mining on this blockchain, let's say I'm, I have some hard drive space and I want to participate. How would that work? Sure. So it's essentially has a normal proof of work system with hashing nested inside of this proof of access system. And this is because of how the block weave works. Uh, the block weave, as well as including the hash of the last block in the system, also includes um, the ent entire data related to a previous block in the network. And that means that in order to take part in the mining, you have to have access to that old data. But because you can't predict what the old block that is required to mine the new block is going to be ahead of time, as a miner, your best uh, strategy is to store as many of the old blocks as you can. And in doing so, we've essentially created a system that incentivizes miners to store as much of the data as they can. Wow. So you don't have to have the whole blockchain, unlike in other systems. You only need to have enough blocks so that you have a good shot at having the right one when it comes up in the mining. So what happens if a block is entirely lost? Can the blockchain just grind to a halt? Well, what's really cool about the system is that as the number of redundant copies of a block lowers, the incentive for other people in the network to store that block increases. This is because if that block is chosen as the recall block, they will then be uh, fighting against a fewer number of other miners in order to mine the next block in the system. So they get a higher probability of reward depending on the availability of the recall block. So you're essentially incentivized to store rare blocks. But if you get into a situation where it looks like nobody has the recall block, the chain stops for a while while everyone tries to find it. And in doing so, the transactions build up. And so the potential reward for the person that does find the block increases. And eventually, if really nobody finds the block, then it reaches a timeout. But in the intervening period, there, there's a massive potential reward for someone to find that block. That is so powerful. We haven't been in a world where storage is actually hard to access. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It's funny, it's like one of those things that you, you don't realize is a problem until it's far too late. Uh, I actually had some of my Git repositories held on a, in fact, I probably shouldn't mention the name of the service, but held on a, a large VPS service available in the UK. And um, yeah, a couple of years ago, <laughs> uh, 
They just informed me that they, they'd lost all of the data. And it was a sort of, you know, what do you mean? That can't possibly happen type moment. But sure enough, it did happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. And, well, and yeah, I really wished it was decentralized at that point. Yeah, that, that's the power of that when you have that happen to yourself. <laughs> right. So Arweave has its own token on the blockchain as well, similar to the Bitcoin blockchain. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, so as well as being a block weave data structure, the, the basics of the economics are actually very similar to Bitcoin. So with Bitcoin, there is a data segment attached to each transaction, but I think it's limited to 160 bytes or so, and it's extremely expensive. But you are paying for the bytes you're storing in the, in the blockchain. Ours is, is very similar. It's just that we allow you to store you know, gigabytes, not just 160 bytes. Right. It's a whole different order of magnitude. Plus, the blockchain is stored in such a way that people can participate in parts of the data, which is really powerful. That's precisely right, yeah. So I understand you're having an ICO for the tokens on this network. Tell us about that. How can people get involved? Sure. So we have a, a public sale coming up shortly. Um, you can whitelist on our website, which is rweave.org. Uh, yeah, it'll be before the network launches, which is June 8th. Um, but <laughs> the last few days, we've actually had uh, nearly 10,000 people whitelist. So it's... It's going very quickly. Wow, booming. <laughs> Quite, yeah. So did you say the ICO is on June 8th or the blockchain is launching on June 8th? The blockchain is launching on June 8th. The uh, public sale will be shortly before that. Wow, coming right up. So how can people get involved in this project? I know it's really exciting technology. Well, the, the main thing that we'd love for people to do is to get started with the uh, development of applications on top of the system. And in order to incentivize that, we've got this system that we call the Semi-Autonomous Fund which is basically works kind of like VC funding, but it's automated. So if you get started building an Arweave application and you send us a GitHub link and it just says, you know, this is what I'm going to build here, we'll give you a small amount of R. If you then develop the system so that it can submit transactions onto the network and you prove that it does that, we give you some more R, uh, you know, a large quantity. And then when you start pushing real, uh, yeah, transaction throughput onto the network, there's an increasing uh, reward as you go through the stages of building a successful application. Wow, that's awesome. So for you developers out there, be sure to check this out. And it is Rweave, and you can actually earn R by developing on the platform. For sure. That's cool. So do you have any last words for our viewership? Uh, no, it, it would be great to see you in the community. Cool. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.